They fought, bled, and shaped the course of the Mexican Revolution, but their stories have often been left in the shadows. Thousands of women, soldaderas, stood on the front lines, not just following men, but even leading them into battle. One woman even disguised herself as a man to fight, and what happened when her secret was revealed was a twist I wasn't expecting. These women weren't just supporting the revolution. Many would say they were the backbone of it, and today we're bringing their stories to light. Friend, welcome to the Mysteries of Latin America podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Colon, and today we're diving into a story you might have heard something about before, but not the whole story. You see, when most people think about the Mexican Revolution, names like Pancho Villa and Emiliano Zapata often come to mind. We picture men charging into battle for freedom and justice. But there's a part of the revolution story that's been overshadowed, and that's the story I'm here to tell today. Here on this program, we explore the untold stories, the hidden histories, and the legends that shape Latin America. For those of you who've been with me for a while, you know I do this to help reconnect us with our cultural roots, to find those stories that help shape our past and still echo in our lives today. If you're new here, bienvenido o bienvenida. We're about to take a journey into a part of history that hopefully will inform and entertain you, and maybe just surprise you. Because today we're talking about the soldaderas and the adelitas, the women who fought, bled, and died in the Mexican Revolution. These women weren't just cooking food or nursing soldiers. Many became soldiers themselves, and often the difference between life and death for the men they fought alongside. In 1910, the Mexican Revolution began, and Mexico was at a breaking point. 35 years of President Porfirio Diaz had brought much wealth and success for some, but it also crushed the hopes of millions of others. People were starving, land had been stolen, and the country was choking on inequality. And so the revolution erupted, with men from every corner of Mexico taking up arms. But not just men. Thousands of women, soldaderas, joined the fight. You might think these women were just following their brothers, husbands, and sons, cooking meals, or caring for the wounded. Well, well, many of them did, and they did do that. But what you might not know is that these women were fighting too, with rifles in their hands and determination in their hearts. And this is where things start to get interesting. You see, at first, these women weren't recognized as soldiers. They weren't supposed to be fighting. They were expected to just support. But something was happening on those battlefields that no one expected. As the revolution and the fighting progressed, the lines between who could fight and who couldn't started to blur. The soldaderas were no longer just supporting the men. When battles broke out, they picked up rifles too and defended themselves and the troops around them. This was happening all over Mexico, from the north with Pancho Villa's army to the south with Emiliano Zapata's. And there's a famous story of a soldadera named Petra Herrera, who disguised herself as a man and fought on the front lines, earning the respect of her fellow soldiers. At first, no one knew her secret. Petra went by the name Pedro, and blew up bridges, led attacks, and fought with such skill that her male comrades couldn't help but follow her lead. But then her identity was revealed. She wasn't just Pedro, she was Petra, and she wasn't alone. Women all over the country were stepping up and taking a rifle into their hand. So what did Petra do next? She formed her own brigade of all-female soldiers, a battalion of women who fought side by side with men, breaking every expectation of what women could do in war. And so why are some of these women known as Adelitas? Well, the name Adelita comes from a popular folk song named, you guessed it, Adelita. That's a famous Mexican corrido that emerged during the Mexican Revolution, telling the story of a brave soldadera named Adelita who followed her lover into battle. En lo alto de una bruta serranía Acampado se encontraba un regimiento Y una novia que valiente lo seguía Locamente enamorada del sargento Popular entre la tropa era delita La mujer que el sargento idolatraba Que además de ser valiente era bonita 
que hasta el mismo coronel la respetaba y se oía que decía aquel que tanto la Si Adelita se fuera con otro, la seguiría por tierra y por mar. Si por mar en un buque de guerra, si por tierra en un tren militar. Si Adelita quisiera ser mi novia y si Adelita fuera mi mujer, le compraría un vestido de seda. The song romanticizes her loyalty and courage, turning her into a symbol of love, sacrifice, and patriotism. But was she a real person, or was she a composite figure of all the soldaderas who fought in the war? Friend, she was real. Adela Velarde, born into a wealthy family in Ciudad Juarez, defied societal norms by joining the Mexican Revolution as a nurse. Her courage and dedication were immortalized in that famous revolutionary song, a symbol of resistance that stemmed for her love for Sergeant Antonio Gil del Rio, who tragically died in battle. Adela Velarde, known as Adelita, not only provided medical care to soldiers, but also became a symbol of female strength and resilience. Her story, like that of many soldaderas, remind us that women played vital roles far beyond the battlefield, challenging the expectations of their time and socioeconomic status. In 1941, Adela Velarde, Adelita, was awarded the Condecoración al Mérito Revolucionario, the Medal for Revolutionary Merit, for her bravery and contributions to the revolution. The song became deeply connected to the many women who played active roles in the revolution, often called Adelitas, whether they fought, supported troops, or served in critical support roles. Ensuring their role in the revolution was remembered, even as formal histories often overlooked them. To this day, Adelita remains an iconic part of Mexican cultural heritage, performed in celebrations of the revolution and serving as a reminder of the important role women played in shaping Mexico's history. But here's the twist. While Adelita became the face of bravery, the reality for most of these women wasn't so glamorous. The desert wasn't filled with love songs. It was filled with blood, sweat, and fear. These women endured the same brutal conditions as the men. They'd walk for days in the heat, carrying supplies, weapons, and sometimes children on their backs. They were attacked not only by enemy soldiers, but by the harsh elements of the land. And when their men fell, they took up arms and charged into battle themselves. Now, the soldaderas didn't just fight, they won battles. Take the story of Juana Ramona, also known as La Tigresa, the Tigress. She was feared across Mexico for her ferocity in battle. Alongside Petra Herrera's all-female brigade, they weren't just defending camps, they were taking the fight to the enemy. These women were fighting to win, to survive, and to change their future and the future of the country. But despite the victories, these women were rarely acknowledged in the official accounts of the revolution. The history books praised Villa and Zapata, but the soldaderas? Their names were often left out. It was almost as if their contributions had been, at best diminished, and at worst, purposely erased. After the revolution ended in 1920, many of these women returned to their homes, or what was left of them. For some, it was back to the life that they had before the war, but for others, the scars of battle were permanent. And there's a reason why the story of the soldaderas is still so important today. You see, they weren't just fighting for independence from Diaz's dictatorship. They were fighting for their own rights, for recognition, for the chance to show that women could be warriors too. But as the dust settled, their contributions were pushed aside. The songs of Adelita lingered, but the real raw story of the soldaderas, it was almost lost. 
And while these women were virtually ignored in history books, their legacy lives on in the spirit of the country of Mexico. The soldaderas paved the way for women's rights movements in the country. Their defiance of traditional roles during the revolution was a seed planted in the soil of Mexico's fight for gender equality. Without these warriors, without Petra Herrera, Juana Ramona, and the countless unnamed women, we wouldn't have the Mexico we see today. And that's why even though their stories were suppressed, they have never really been forgotten. Their battles didn't just change the course of the revolution, they changed the course of history. So what does this story tell us? It tells us that revolutions aren't just fought by men. It tells us that courage has no gender. And it reminds us that even when history tries to erase you, your impact can still be felt. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Mysteries of Latin America podcast. I'm Andrew, and if you're new here, I invite you to subscribe, follow, and share this story, depending on how you're getting it, so you can join us as we continue to dive deep into the mysteries, legends, history, and unsolved mysteries that span the vast and vibrant lands of Latin America, from the northern border of Mexico to the southern tip of Argentina and across the Caribbean islands. This is for all of you with roots in the Americas and the Caribbean to know all our stories. And for those of you who don't have these roots, to know a little more what makes up our cultural DNA. And if you have a story or comment to add to our cultural DNA, drop us a line at andy at andycancun, and I'll be glad to take a look at it. That's andy at andycancun.com. Who knows? Maybe you'll inspire the next episode of the Mysteries of Latin America podcast. Friend, my name is Andrew Colon, and I send a warm gracias from Cancun. Adiós.